Hey y'all, welcome back to Lisa Michelle, Beyond the Scale. Well, it's week 24 of Ozempic 1 milligram dosage. And I am still in the 160s. Matter of fact, I am 1.6 pound up from what I was last week. I was 160.2. Now I'm 161. Point eight, something like that, y'all. But I still look exactly the same as I did yesterday. And Gigi done come up here and read me a passage out of our Bishop, Bishop V. Jesse Smith's book that he has um, published. So you need to go out and get your own copy. Very inspirational. So this is the, uh, the cover. Gigi, can you get it on Amazon? Yes. Find it on Amazon. Back where you belong on top of the world. Satan's man. He lost the soul he thought he had. Ha! Reverend V. Jesse Smith. So this is what the cover looks like. Go get your copy, y'all. I'm going to read to you something that inspired me this morning. Because I was feeling a little, I don't know. I won't say irritated. I'm just, I work so very hard in what I'm doing and I pride myself in doing that and I don't know sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't mind you it's only 1.6 pounds up but I don't want no up but guess what you're gonna get up because oh months and months ago weeks and weeks ago I had gained three pounds and then I lost it the next week and you know it's just like that but I don't know it could be quite frustrating at times when Things don't go like you think they should go. So it's just one of those things, y'all. But I still look like I did yesterday. Got a whole bunch of compliments on my cute dress. So I'm feeling cute and everything. So guess what? Live to see another day. You might see something new. I saw something new. Do you see something new? Mm -hmm. I'm going to read a passage from this book, okay? This is in... The end of the first chapter on page 18. I'm just going to go down to where I want to read. Paula White, the great TV gospel personality, wrote a book entitled, Can You Stay on the Wagon? She beautifully highlights in the book that the purpose of a wagon is to carry bundles of wheat. And then, hey, and then, and when placed on a wagon, that wheat undergoes a bumpy ride. You know, we all go through bumpy rides, y'all. Because a wagon does not have shock absorbers. Any bump that it hits, you are going to feel it. Paula equates us to the wheat and skillfully illustrates that the challenges and struggles we face in life represent the wagon. We are on and and that as life takes us through these challenges and struggles, which can be bumpy and rough, we can stay. Can we stay on that wagon? Can we stay prayed up to deal with the challenges and struggles of today? Can we continue to praise God in spite of the bumpy ride? Yes, we can. We are experience in, experiencing in our lives. Can we stay on the wagon? If we cannot stay on the wagon, then self-doubt sinks in. Like when you gain 1.6 pounds and you're like, well, what's going on? I've done everything I could do. Maybe you didn't. Maybe your body just holding on. It takes a while to get to greatness. I promise you. It's, this has been a long journey from 2006, y'all. Depression sinks in. The questioning of one's existence and purpose in life sinks in. And then we end up Falling off the wagon. Kaboom! Indeed, I would venture to say that we can stay on the wagon as long as we know the source from which we come and whence cometh our help. It comes from God. So despite the fact that trouble may come into your life, despite the fact that we may be burdened with life's struggles, Despite the fact that bad things may come into our lives, 
we must always remember Robert Schuller often says, tough times don't last, but tough people do. Woohoo! Child. Thus, whenever bad thing, thus whatever bad thing that may be happening to you, know that it is for a short while and that ultimately this too shall pass. It's going to pass, y'all. Okay, I'm fine. This too shall pass. The experiencing, the experiencing, I'm doing it all the time. The experience you are going through and the key word is going through is taking place in order for you to get to the next level. Don't hate the experience. Learn from it and evolve into the greatness as a result of it. <sighs> Hallelujah. Okay. So we're going to close right there, y'all. Go and purchase this book, Back Where You Belong, On Top of the World. Satan's mad. He lost the soul. He thought he had. Reverend V. Jesse Smith. And he is the bishop and my bishop of the Way Center of Truth here in Palmdale, California. You can check him out on Facebook as well if you are out of state or feeling sick and not anywhere near this area. You can find him on Facebook on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock. Um, Facebook, The Way Center of Truth. Just type it in your search engine on Facebook. And you too can enjoy wonderful teachings from Bishop Reverend V. Jesse Smith. So that is a plug for him. <laughs> so I'll take these glasses off. Yeah, they glare so much. I just don't wear them, but. I'm feeling better after Gigi read that word to me and just letting you know what life is going to show up. It's going to show out. Everything's not like you think it should be all the time. And you can't let that discourage you, even though it does. You know, I'm, I'm human, just like you all are, because I know I work really hard. But what I can remember, I'll be trying to re I track my food and what I'm doing. What I do know is I drank a lot of water, maybe just not enough. I did a few different things that I don't ordinarily do. We um, went out with friends Sunday after church and we went to uh, Chili's restaurant and I ordered a cute little small cup of chicken enchilada soup, a little small cup. You can see it on my Lisa Michelle Beyond the Scale Instagram page. You can see how small the cup was. Even people at the table that were with us. You going to eat that? that that's all you going to have? Well, I had a little side salad, a house salad. So I had to cut that in half because it was a decent amount of salad, more than what my palm size amount requires. So I had that and then I saved. Oh, and, and the waitress brought another one of those soups by mistake. She said, I'll oh, just keep it. And she didn't charge us for it. So I kept that and I had that for dinner later. So maybe my body doesn't like chicken enchilada soup. And what's funny, that was, I don't know what that was. I'm gonna call up there and ask him, what kind of chicken do you put in your chicken enchilada soup? It was like some old pressed meat or something. You know, like when you get that canned spam, you're not old enough. You don't know about this spam child. It was all the rage, fried up in the skillet and putting on some buttered bread, child, and some eggs. But anywho, it was some pressed meat. So I'm just like, okay. So I said, I want some real chicken in my chicken enchilada soup. And I didn't have the tortilla strips. I gave them away to somebody that was at the table with us. So, And then we went yesterday to Sizzler to celebrate one of the art club um ladies in the art club senior av art club av art club um birthday she turned 71 yesterday paula and i had two sides of shrimp which one side is four shrimps and i know i can have eight so that amounted up to eight and i did have butter uh melted butter and only eight, used one of them and didn't use all of it and then i had made a salad from the salad bar. I put red onions on it and some um, hard boiled egg. And I had a little bit of blue cheese and 
thousand island dressing not no whole bunch but enough um so that i know those particular things are out of what i'm doing so you have to make sure you keep a food diary and i have one in my phone on my fitbit app so i track all of my food and i make sure i get up and move after i'm um done eating and try not to sit around like I like to do because it's comfortable. Oh, you fool, you want to just chill and do what you want to do sitting down. No, you need to get yourself up. Go do some housework. You know, it's plenty of housework you could be doing. If you could see everything, you'd be like, oh, you should have been up. Ha! Oh, well, that's the way it is. It's my place. It's my house and I live here. It's my house and I live here. Anywho, um, Everything is not going to be the same, but when you keep a food diary, you can go look back and say, well, what is it that I did? I know I should have had a whole bunch more water. I was drinking water. I was up half the night in the bathroom, and I'm just like, good Lord. So if you think you're getting too much water and you go into the bathroom every two seconds, guess what? It's still not enough water. Drink some more water, and I'm telling you that because I'm telling myself, so drink some water. It's important. Choke that water down. You need to be drinking water at least every 15 minutes. Just get it in there and wash it on out, okay? Get it in. So I've given away some more um, clothes this week. I've got uh, several bags, and I'm giving them away to some nice woman that I know that could use them for work. And I have really cute clothes because the cute clothes were... um given to me by somebody <laughs> so when i make room and get the things out of my closet are that are no longer serving me guess what that are no longer serving me then i can make room for the new clothes that are serving me because how many times you're going to push back and push aside those same clothes that you never put on your body oh but you're saving it because it got memories on it how about take a picture? It'll last longer. Hmm. I'm, I'm, I've been gutting that closet because I need room for the new clothes that I have that my mom um has so gratefully cleaned out her closet and no longer serve her. So the clothes that she found. That that caused the stroke because during uh 2020 when coronavirus was up and around i sent in my paperwork i don't watch the news and stuff i watch a youtube channel like the news is depressing and they lying on there like they always do so i didn't know nothing about no coronavirus so i sent my little paperwork in for my insurance and when everybody decided they'd come back to work you know when they were allowed to go back to work and not work from home they sent me paperwork that said, guess what? Guess what? Your insurance has been canceled. Oh, I was pissed. I'm like, I need that insurance. I take insulin and blood pressure medicine. So guess what? When the insurance got canceled, I didn't have any of those items either. So I said, you know what? I'm going to eat whatever it is I want to eat. And you're not supposed to do that. You have diabetes and high blood pressure and that's not a good mix so let's say from april to september i had no insulin to put in my body nor high blood pressure medicine that i so dearly need and even my uh, cholesterol medicine that i 
take every night of my life. So it helps with the, um, my arteries and stuff. So they're not clogged and get some blockage for another stroke. I'm not trying to go back there, y'all. I'm on a hot mission because I'm taking care of Lisa. And if I don't do it, no one else can. So that's why I'm so strict with myself. And that's why I'm so hard on myself because for a long time, I just wasn't hard on myself. And I can't say that I didn't care about me, but it showed that I didn't because you can see that I just didn't care. The taste of the food and how it made me feel, I, I, I made that a priority in my life. And guess what? The way some food tastes, that's not going to get you good health. I have very good numbers and I'm happy and I do not want to be back down that road again and so i'm the one that caused the stroke so i still have delays in my speech and even like when i was reading a moment ago sometimes i just have to pause because my mind hasn't caught up with my thoughts you know when i'm thinking in my speech at the same time yes yeah, a bit much but i still have things going on with me from the stroke and all of my toes they're still numb from 2020 because I had the uh, neuropathy. So I guess I still have it, but it's better at times during the day, but it mostly bothers me at night. So I just make sure that I keep my um, feet massaged with my own hands and I um, wiggle my toes and keep them um, very nice. Yeah, I keep them nice though. So I will let you all know any developments. Oh, and when I started, this is week 24, when I started the Ozempic, I, um, see, it's happening again. That's what I'm talking about because I have a whole thought process going on and then it's just gone. So what I'm going to tell you is that at um, when I first started the Ozempic, my A1C was at 8.6. Then I took another A1C test a while after, and then I was 6.8. Well, now I'm at the grand total of 5.8, which is really a really good A1C. And that is a three-month test that tests your blood sugar over the course of three months. So I'm doing well with that. Um, the doctor put me back on blood pressure medicine. I took myself off because... With the Ozempic and me eating right and doing so good with what I'm consuming, my blood pressure kept getting really low and I was really fatigued and tired and lethargic and I didn't like the way that felt because I was taking some big old giant pill in the morning and the evening and it was just too much for my system and I have a new doctor now but the other doctor, which is a good doctor, um, can never reach him so I said, you know what? This is my body, and I got to do what I need to do for me. I don't have time to be waiting for a verdict from him. So I took myself off them blood pressure pills, and I was doing fine all the while. But when I get to the new doctor, um, I had, um, you know, when you go to the doctor, your blood pressure elevates because I guess they say you're excited or whatever. But I ain't feel excited, but I guess my system did. So I've been getting wonderful blood pressures all the while. Why I was 159 over 80, something like that. And I said, what kind of nonsense you trying to show out, show me up at the doctor's office? So she said, well, by me having a stroke in 2020, she's concerned and wants to make sure everything is right. So she has put me on a five milligram pill. I don't even remember what it's called, y'all, but I know it when I'm taking it. Five milligram pill of blood pressure uh, medication. So I take that in the evening. I take my cholesterol pill in the evening and I take a, a 81 milligram of aspirin in the evening. But guess what? I was taking six units of insulin and she said, you know what? Six units of insulin is really about not worth taking. It's just like you're taking nothing. You might as well not take it. So she took me off of the insulin. So I was excited about that. You know, that's a milestone. When I had the stroke in 2020, do you know I was taking 30 units of insulin at that time? And then I went to 12 
much later, years later, went to 12 units of insulin. And then now I was just taking six units of insulin. So she just took me off. It's been almost two weeks, about two weeks now. So my blood sugar is actually right. It's just absolutely wonderful. And I have, uh, she prescribed me a continuous glucose monitor. So that's what's right here. And you put it in and you set the transmitter up. This is the sensor. Then it has a little cute little transmitter. It looks like a little mini cell phone, but it's not. A cute little old-fashioned looking box. So in the morning when I prick my finger for my blood sugar, I get to calibrate that receiver and put in the number that my blood sugar was, which was 102 this morning. So it's calibrated for the day. And then I'll retake it and recalibrate again around four o'clock in the afternoon because that's when I usually have my dinner have like set time so yeah I'm enjoying my Dexcom it's not a commercial my Dexcom G6 continuous glucose monitor so I'm in love with it I promise you and I get to check my blood sugar and see how different food affects me all throughout the day and I like that um I don't have to keep sticking myself all day long, only about twice a day because I want to calibrate and make sure things are going right. So, yeah, y'all, I know I don't look like I gained a pound, 0. 0.6, but I did, and I'm going to concentrate on the words out of um, Bishop Reverend V. Jesse Smith's book and quotes he got from um other people and himself and i'm just going to reflect on those things so i got my little art club t-shirt on this is an extra large i don't know what that is child probably some little powder from somewhere i don't know child and then i got these are my size 14 pants. My 12s are moving up and down like this too now. So I'm really tickled about that. So I can, I can pull them all the way, all the way down. I just don't like how this camera be adding extra pounds, child. You be feeling extra juicy on the video. But anyway, these are 14s. I'm wearing them today. They feel amazing. I don't have nothing cutting off my life supply. So I'm like, yeah. So this is how it is, and I'm going to try to be here to encourage you as I encourage myself. You're not going to lose weight every week, Lisa. Sometimes you will gain. Sometimes you'll stay the same. But guess what? I'm healthy no matter what's going on, but I refuse to let myself get past or up to five pounds of weight gain because if you don't continue to eat like you're supposed to eat and what you've been eating and how you've been eating the whole time and you go back to slipping up into the slippery crack of it all you're gonna gain weight it's called calorie deficit so you have to move drink water you have to move around incorporate some exercise into your life which i have not done yet honestly i keep saying that i'm going to um do the chair exercises on YouTube. Maybe today might be the day. I might be motivated for that. I need to move my body. My body um, has a condition of scoliosis. And I have a curvature of the right side of my spine. And I'm always in some excruciating back pain. Which I am in right now. But you'd never know I was in pain. But sometimes my um, knee goes out from the stroke on my um left side my I could be walking and my knee will go out so sometimes you'll see me with the cane or you'll see me with the walker because you just never know when your knee gonna give out it almost gave out this morning but I was I was holding on child to the countertop like oh so just we're gonna stay here and continue to encourage each other and I'll give you another update maybe in a few more days and I'll do some different things so I had my um protein shake this morning it wasn't premier it was a uh, top care so that's a less expensive brand at the store so price is good and it still has 30 grams of um, protein which um, has you full for most of the day and later on I'll be trying to go grocery shopping but in the meantime in between time 
I'm good. Are you good? If you have any topics or anything that you would like me to discuss on this channel, I'll be more than glad to do so. Because you know, child, I like to talk. That's why I got this YouTube channel so I can share with you all. Mm -hmm. Oh, and an update from the previous video. My um, Instagram friend, Melanie, she started her new YouTube channel on Black Friday. And I told her, child, you need to start a YouTube channel. People want to hear your story. So she finally did. And I'm just really so very proud of her. So please go over and subscribe to her page. It's a Southern Sugar, S-U-G-A, Southern Sugar by Mel. So go click like, share, and subscribe to her channel. And let her know that Lisa Michelle Beyond the Scale from Instagram and YouTube sent you. Okay? She has an email list and everything. So please join up with her and support her. She's going to go through all of the different things that she's been through on her journey. And she had bariatric surgery, which by no means is that um, an easy feat to go through. She was 400 pounds. I think she's two something now. I don't know exactly, but go follow her story and go find out the ins and outs. And she's also a baker. You know, that has to be hard when you're trying to lose weight and take care of your body. When I tell you all she looks amazing, she looks amazing. She lives in Louisiana, so go check her out and tell her that I sent you. And please go share, click like, subscribe, tell a friend, tell a friend. So see you later, y'all. And I hope you all are having a blessed and wonderful day. Take care of yourself. Stay hydrated. Don't be so hard on yourself because guess what? I'm hard on myself a lot and I don't like the way that feels. I'm going to just love on myself no matter if I'm up or if I'm down. I'm going to celebrate the highs and I'm going to celebrate the lows because guess what? I'm not where I was, but I'm going to where I want to be. Ha! So I'll talk to you later. See you all on the flip side. Peace.